Hey kiddos, this is Miss Davis here to read some more chapters from The Wild Robot. Chapter 54 is titled The Winter. The island was quiet. The migratory birds had all left, the hibernators were asleep, and everyone else had begun their simple winter routines. Everyone but Roz. Now that she was alone, our robot didn't know what to do with herself. She stood in her gray garden and watched a sheet of ice slowly form on the pond. Sometimes she could hear her good friends, the beavers, going about their business beneath the ice, and she wondered when she would see them again. Roz stood there until snowflakes started drifting down from the sky. The flakes swirled in the breeze and slowly piled up on the ground and on the trees and on the robot. So she crouched into the nest, slid the stone door behind her, and sat in darkness. Hours and days and weeks went by without the robot moving. She had no need to move. She felt perfectly safe in the nest. And so, in her own way, the robot hibernated. Roz's body relaxed. Her quiet whirring slowly stopped. Her eyes faded to black. She probably could have spent centuries like that hibernating in total darkness, but the robot's hibernation was suddenly interrupted when a shaft of sunlight fell upon her face and carried energy back to her empty battery. Roz's body tensed. Her quiet whirring slowly started. Her eyes began to glow. Hello, I am Rosm Unit 7134, but you may call me Roz, the robot said automatically. When all her systems were up and running again, Roz noticed that she was surrounded by broken branches and pieces of snow. The roof of the nest had caved in and the lodge was now flooded with sunlight. Roz felt more energized with each passing minute, but she also felt cold. Her joints felt stiff and brittle, but she also, er, excuse me, and her thinking was slow. She got up, cleared a spot on the floor, and made a fire. The snow inside the nest began to melt, and the robot sensors began to thaw. And when she was ready, she climbed through the hole in the roof and into the bright foreign landscape. The world Roz had known was now covered in a thick layer of snow. Tree limbs bent to the ground under heavy sleeves. The dark pond was now pure white. The only sounds were Roz's own crunching footsteps. Faint wisps of steam curled up from the robot's body as she trudged through the forest. Roz plunged a hand into a lump of snow and pulled up a long stick. She snapped it in half and flung both pieces back to the nest. She took a few more steps and picked up a fallen tree. She hacked it into smaller pieces and flung them back as well. Then she reached down to another snowy shape, but what she pulled up was not a piece of wood. It was Dart the Weasel. He was frozen solid. Roz stared at his stiff body for a moment and then decided it was best to leave the poor thing where he was. As the robot continued gathering wood, she found more victims of the cold. A frozen mouse, a frozen bird, a frozen deer. Had all the island animals frozen to death? No, not all. There were a few fresh tracks in the snow. As we know, the wilderness is filled with beauty, but it's also filled with ugliness. And that winter was ugly. A devastating cold front had swept down from the north and brought dangerous temperatures and huge amounts of snow. The animals had prepared for winter, but nothing could have prepared the weaker ones for those long nights when the temperature plummeted and the wind whipped over the island. Roz returned to the nest where the fire had melted the interior snow to a muddy soup. She took a minute to warm her body by the flames, and she began the repairs. She patched up the hole in the dome with a latticework of branches before adding a layer of mud and leaves, and soon the repairs were complete. But another snowfall might cave in the nest all over again. So Roz decided to keep a fire going day and night to prevent snow from building up on the roof. The robot brought in load after load of firewood, and each time she went outside, she was reminded of the frozen weasel and mouse and bird and deer. How many other frozen animals were hidden behind the snow? Before going in for the night, she called out to wonder to whoever was listening, Animals of the wild, you do not have to freeze. Join me in my lodge where it is safe and warm. Chapter 55 is titled The Lodgers. Firelight spilled out from the nest and into the cold, blustery night. Roz sat inside and listened to the wind and the soft pops of crackles of burning wood. And then the robot's keen hearing picked up on another sound, tiny footsteps crutching through the snow. Roz, it's freezing. Can I join you by the fire, please? said a weak voice. Into the light crawled Chit Chat. The squirrel was shivering and clumps of ice stuck to her fur. When she finally felt the heat of the fire, she collapsed. Roz picked her up off the floor, gently placed her on a warm stone, and let her sleep.
An hour later, there were more footsteps. A family of hares shuffled into the nest. They huddled together in a corner without saying a word. Pinktail the possum was the next to arrive. Good evening, she mumbled, trying to act cheerful. It certainly has been ch chilly. Swooper the owl hobbled in, followed by some chickadees and a magpie. Fink knew a good thing when he saw it, and the fox lay down right by the fire. Then came Dig Down the Groundhog. The fuzzy bandits carried in an old turtle named Crag, who was in the worst shape of all. Creatures who had been hibernating deep underground had been roused by that vicious weather. Only the healthiest animals with the warmest homes were safe. More and more weary animals appeared, and slowly the lodge filled up. This was the first time many of the lodgers had seen fire, and they gazed at it with a mixture of fear and hope. They could feel the fire's destructive power, but they could also feel its healing power as it warmed their bones. The lodgers seemed to push forward, eager to feel more warmth, and then pull back, afraid to feel too much. It was important that the lodgers understood fire, so Roz showed them how to build one. She showed them the smaller animals how to arrange the kindling, and she showed the bigger animals how to arrange the logs. logs. Bumpkin, Lumpkin, and Rumpkin struck the fire stones together, and everyone cheered when they finally managed a spark. As Roz looked around, she saw moles curling up beside an owl, a mouse snuggling between two weasels, hares nesting against a, nestling against a badger. Never before had the robot seen prey and predators so close and peaceful, but how long could this peace possibly last? I propose a truce, said Roz, like the dawn truce. Everyone must agree not to hunt or harm one another while in my lodge. Very well, said Swooper after consulting his carnivorous friends. We hunters will control ourselves. Then it is settled, said Roz. My home is a safe place for all. One by one, the lodgers each fell into a deep sleep. Even the nocturnal creatures, usually wide awake at this hour, gave in to the coziness of the nest. The robot stood out of the way and quietly tended to the fire as her guests slept through the night. Only when daylight was streaming in through the door did the lodgers finally begin to stir. You are all welcome to stay here as long as you'd like, said the robot at the, as the animals rubbed sleep from their eyes. My home is your home. Thanks a lot, Roz. Fink carefully stepped over a hare and a woodpecker on his way to the door. I don't think I would have survived another night on my own. It's just too bad we can't cram a few more creatures in here. And the fox slipped outside. The robot looked down at the fur and feathers that now carpeted the floor. The nest had been completely full that night. If any more animals showed up, they'd be left out in the cold. But Roz was not about to let that happen. Wow, friends, I am so interested to see what happened. And to be honest, that chapter really warmed my heart. That was such a kind thing that Roz did for the other animals. All right, I will be back with more chapters soon. Happy reading.